Welcome to Theory of Pets. I'm a passionate pet owner with a drive to help others like me uncover the truth about the pet industry and what goes on behind the scenes. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Theory of Pets. My name is Samantha. For those of you just tuning in, Theory of Pets is a podcast that I do a few times a month, and I talk to experts in the pet industry. I give you my own personal advice. I've been a pet owner my entire life, and I've been working in the pet industry for about the last decade, so I give you some of my own input as well sometimes. And this week, I'm talking to another expert from the pet industry. Uh, I was actually not able to speak with him in person, but I was able to have an email conversation with him. And the expert that I spoke with is Dr. Jeff Werber. He's the veterinarian and Mars Pet Care spokesperson. Obviously, Mars Pet Care is one of the uh, leading pet product companies in the industry. So uh, to talk to Dr. Werber was a uh, great pleasure for me. And uh, as you can probably imagine, he's a very busy guy. So we weren't able to touch base, but uh, we did have a conversation through email and I learned some great information. We spoke on a topic that is um, a top concern of mine, um, and that's obesity. We also talked about how seasons can affect your dog's appetite. Uh, this is the time of year when we're kind of transitioning from, uh, you know, the busy, active summer lifestyle into uh, fall and winter. Things kind of slow down a little. We don't do as much outdoor activity uh, as we did in the warm summer months. So, or as most of us uh, don't. Some people that live in climates that are still pretty mild might be outside and active, but um, in a lot of different areas of the world, uh, the climate changes drastically. And so, you know, things get a little bit more mellow, slow down a little bit in the fall and winter months. Um, so I wanted to talk about how those seasons, that seasonal change can affect your pet's uh, diet and can affect, um, obviously, your pet's metabolism. So we got talking about um, obesity, which is uh, – uh, something I always stand on my soapbox whenever pet obesity comes on the table uh, because it's such an epidemic in our country and uh, really around the world. It's one of the leading um, health conditions that veterinarians see, and it is a health condition that the sad part of it is it's completely preventable. It's our fault as pet parents that our dogs are overweight, our cats are overweight. It's us overfeeding, and it's us not allowing them the exercise and the time to burn the the calories that we're feeding them. So it's completely preventable. Once your pet becomes obese, that opens the door to so many more health concerns. And that's what so many parents don't realize. You just think that your pet is fat and happy. You feed him. He loves eating. He loves treats. It makes him happy, makes his tail wag, makes your cat purr. And, um, you know, they rub all over you. They get so excited to get treats. That part of it's great. And I don't um, want to take that away from any pet owners or any pets by any means. But the overfeeding leads to obesity. And that opens the door to so many serious health concerns. We're talking things like diabetes. Certain kinds of cancers have been linked to obesity or more commonly found in pets that are obese. Heart disease. Major, major health concerns that are completely preventable or the concerns themselves aren't completely preventable, but the obesity is. So you're you're making your pet more susceptible to being obese and in turn making them more susceptible to all of these diseases. So um, Again, you know, this is is part of what I talked to Dr. Werber about, um, and we also talked about the seasons. So uh, I'm just going to go over for you what we talked about and kind of give you um, his advice and tips because there was some great stuff in here that I really wanted to share. Um, so first of all, on the pet obesity topic, um, you know, like I said, it's become an epidemic here in the United States. So why is it so important for owners to monitor their pet's diet and keep them at an optimal weight? Um, and, you know, when I asked Dr. Werber that, he told me that obesity is a common health issue that he is seeing more and more with his clients. And it's important for pet owners to monitor their dogs or cats uh, diet and keep them at a healthy weight because there's a plethora of conditions associated with obesity. And I mentioned some of those, um, including, you know, the risk of diabetes, cardiovascular disease. So he says that regular veterinary visits are a great way to manage various medical conditions that you might not even know about. Um, and it's also a perfect time to ask for pet 
cat care advice or to get an expert opinion on any questions that you may have that are specific to your dog's behavior or needs. Um, This is really important when it comes to your dog's diet. Talking to your veterinarian about the best diet for your dog, um, it's, it's, really crazy to think about but um and you may be one of the pet owners that feel or thinks this way but a lot of us don't even realize when our pets are overweight um when they get to be obese and they kind of have that nice plump round belly um it's more obvious but when your dog is overweight and he's maybe not by much maybe only by 10 pounds or so um think about on um you know a dog level 10 pounds is a lot of extra weight or for your cat he might only need to lose five pounds but five pounds is so much weight for a small cat so uh, think about that and um, you know if you have some questions if you're not sure if your pet is overweight or if he's at a healthy weight um, this goes for underweight too you know there are some pet owners who you know you go by the feeding guidelines on the bag and maybe that food isn't nutritionally sound for your dog's exercise um, activity level or your dog's age and maybe he's actually underweight so you know, talking with your vet is, of course, the best thing that you can do. You get that expert advice. You can get any questions answered. You don't need to make a special appointment. Um, you should be taking your dog to the vet regularly um, a couple of times a year for dental cleanings, regular checkups, immunizations, things like that. So, you know, just go at your next appointment, talk to your vet, see what they say, um, you know, and get their advice on how to make changes to your dog's diet that are going to benefit him. Um A lot of pet owners believe that they only need to switch their pet's diet as their dog ages. For example, from puppy food to adult food and then to a senior food when they get to that level. Um, But actually, your pet's diet may need to change with the seasons. And um, Dr. Werber told me more about that um, because this was something that I hadn't put a lot of thought into uh, either. Really, we keep our pets active pretty much year-round. We do live in Maine, um, and there's snow in the winter, lots of snow. But we still hike, and um, we have a big area, a piece of land where, um, you know, our home is so our dogs can spend plenty of time outside. So I hadn't really thought about this. And that's really why I wanted to share it on my podcast this week. Um, You know, 10 years in the pet industry and a lifetime of pet ownership, and I'm still learning new things. So I want to pass those things on to you guys as well, um, because I know there's other people in the same boat as me out there. Um, So when we talk about a seasonal diet, you know, Dr. Werber says that the most important things to consider when caring for a pet is their food, of course. That's the biggest thing that you can do for your pet um, for his overall health and well-being. So you want to make sure that you're providing them with the nutrients needed to grow into a healthy, strong pet. Um, And that does mean identifying the proper food for your dog's life stage. So for a puppy, you want to look for a food that has the highest nutrient content with added protein and vitamins to provide all that is necessary for their bones, muscles, joints, um, everything to develop properly. And then for adults, you should look for a high quality food um, that provides a 100% complete and balanced nutrition for all ages. Um, And then, you know, we talk about that seasonal diet. And um, for seasonal diet changes, you know, we're heading into the fall and winter right now. So you might find yourself spending less time taking part in physical activity. You don't go on, um, you know, two or three daily walks. You take one daily walk. You don't go to the dog park is often Um, if you have you know a big piece of land like we have there are going to be days where it's snowing or it's too cold or uh, whatever the case may be that you're not spending that time outside so that limited activity affects our pets too and can lead to weight gain Um, I know for example we have four cats and our cats are indoor outdoor cats Um, we in the summer months when it's nice and warm out we keep a cat door in one of our basement windows Um, our windows are at ground level so our cats can come in and out as they please Uh, We keep them in at nighttime for, um, you know, safety reasons. We don't want predators and things to get them. But during the day, they have free range inside and outside. In the wintertime, they spend a lot more time indoors. So even if your cat has access to the outdoor, they're probably not going to want to be out there as much in the wintertime. 
So what this means is that your pet is eating more calories than he's burning off. So adjusting the food you give your four-legged friend during the changing seasons is important to keeping them at a healthy weight year-round. Um, and of course, as uh, you know, I mentioned before, you want to be sure to consult your veterinarian to determine that adjustment. Don't make that adjustment on your own. If you notice that your dog is gaining some weight or your cat is gaining some weight, um, you know, you can try to maybe cut his food back a little bit. Um, but you you really should speak with your veterinarian because you want to make sure that you're meeting all the other nutritional guidelines as well. You don't want to cut the calories and cut the protein and the calcium and the fat content uh, that he needs for his body to grow and develop. So it's a very uh, fine line. It's a it's a you know, kind of a tricky balance. So you want to make sure that you're talking to um, your veterinarian before making any changes in your dog's diet, you know, seasonal changes for sure. But, um, you know, if you're changing his food or um, trying to feed based on certain health concerns like obesity, you want to make sure that you discuss that first. So although they are almost over um, and we're kind of phasing out of summer months, Dr. Werber did share some tips with me for managing your dog's weight in the summer months as well. Um, and what he says is that for both people and dogs, hydration obviously is very key, especially during the really hot months. Um, proper nutrition and overall healthy habits um, are key to fully enjoying the summer months and really any any time of the year. But um, specifically in the summer months, it's important to look for a premium dog food with high quality ingredients. Um, he recommends IMS to his clients because because it offers quality protein and essential vitamins and minerals that help your dog maintain a healthy skin and coat. Um, it's great for energy and digestion, um, and it also promotes healthy vitality. So uh, he recommends that one. We have some information on IMS uh, on our website, Top Dog Talk top dog tips as well uh, if you're looking for some information on that or of course you can go to the company's website and check that out um, but that's the one that he recommends every veterinarian is different they're all going to recommend different things and of course they're going to make their recommendation based on your dog's um, weight age activity level any underlying health concerns um, that he may have but you know for the average dog um, Dr. Werber recommends IMS and um, of course you want to feed something that's going to give your dog uh, that energy because you're probably um, you know in contrast to the winter months you're probably doing more he's more active burning more energy in the summer months so you want to make sure that his muscles his joints um, are going to be taking care of with the food, the nutrition that he is eating. Um, of course, proper hydration is uh, important all year round, but especially so in summer months if you're taking walks, if it's hot out, um, you know, if you're going for hikes, things like that. If your dog's just spending more time outside, more make sure he has access to fresh, clean water. So uh, right now, fall is here. We're pretty much done with summer um, and we're phasing into fall and winter. So we need to focus on managing our pet's weight in the winter. Um, and the best tip for that, that um, Dr. Werber says, especially during the holidays, um, treats are abundant for dogs and humans. We all hear about, uh, you know, people who um, they kind of get off their diet during the holiday times, during the winter months there of November and December and January. Um, and then, you know, the new year rolls around and we're all back on our diets. The same can be said for our pets. You have more people in your home. They're sharing some scraps of food or dog treats. Your dog may be getting uh, gifts from people or from yourself for holidays. Uh, so treats are everywhere. Don't forget to make sure that your dog has a chance to go outside and exercise regularly. Burn off those extra calories. Um you know, expel some of that pent up energy. That's really important in the winter months and also control the treats. Um, I know for us, we uh, do our family meals at, in our home. So uh, we have lots of people that come over for different holidays and things like that, activities around um, the holiday seasons. And we make it clear, actually, our family that comes over now, they all know the drill. But when new people come to our house, we make that a rule. Please don't feed the dogs. I'm not going to say that our dogs don't get any treats because somebody sneaks when we're not looking. But it definitely cuts down. Most people are very respectful of that. And they understand that, you know, even though our Beagle Molly has the cutest little face in the world and she will definitely turn on the charm when she thinks she's going to get a treat. Um, you know, we just ask, please don't feed them. It's bad for their health. We're really watching their weight. And we would appreciate if you didn't give them any extra treats. Um, my grandfather, so 
Um, on a little sidetrack here, my grandparents lost their dog a couple of years ago, and they're now in their 80s, and they've just decided that, um, you know, pets are a little bit too much for them now. It's it's too much to take them outside all the time and be responsible for uh, a pet. They travel frequently as well, so uh, they just decided that dogs, it, it wasn't a good fit for them to adopt another dog into their family, but they still enjoy being around dogs and visiting um, and such. So my grandfather just can't help but feed our dogs when he's here, um, and instead he will... Uh, give them a couple of treats, and then he'll take them outside, and they love to play fetch. So he'll take them outside and throw the ball for them for, um, you know, five or ten minutes just to burn off some calories. So he kind of counterbalances it. So you could always tell people that, too. If you can't help feeding them a treat, um, just help us burn it off. You know, get them outside. Give them some extra play time while you're here. So you know, there's ways to manage it, but focus on that. Um, and I think that's a great tip from Dr. Werber. Something that we don't think about a lot is those extra treats that are really abundant this time of year. So keep that in mind. Um, a lot of pet owners choose a food for their pet that is based on price alone as well. Um, and so we're talking about treats and overfeeding and things like that um, and managing your dog's weight. But his day-to-day diet, you don't want to choose something simply based on price. You want to choose a high-quality diet, something that's going to provide him with the nutrients that he needs. And like I mentioned, some of those include protein, calcium, the vitamins and minerals that are required for healthy growth and development, Um, fat. There is a a proper amount of fat that our pets need in their diet. So you want to make sure that that's not too high or too low. Um, So I asked Dr. Werber about, uh, you know, any specific diets that he would recommend. Um, And he told me that, you know, your pet's diet is key to keeping them healthy, which we know. We we all understand that. Um, But sometimes, you know, that more expensive diet is um, less appealing because of the price. So uh, he says, you know, you want to look for a food that includes a mix of high quality ingredients that serve a purpose in your dog's overall health. You don't want the artificial ingredients, um, all of the fillers that don't serve a purpose. They're simply passing through your dog's body and creating more waste. They are completely useless for his growth and development. Um, So again, you know, he recommends IMES because it offers the quality protein, a mix of wholesome grains and essential vitamins and minerals. Um, But, you know, IMES isn't the only one out there. There are others. Talk to your vet. Look for one, um, a diet uh, if you're going to feed commercial or even if you're doing homemade or raw, uh, whatever diet you're feeding your dog, it needs to meet all of those nutritional needs of essential vitamins, minerals, minerals, proteins, fats, you're going to see a visible difference in three areas according to Dr. Werber when you're feeding your dog a balanced diet. And those are the skin and coat. You're going to notice um, a healthier skin and coat, a shinierness, a more vibrant coat. Um, you know, not the skin won't be dry or itchy. It's going to be uh, nice and moisturized. The oils are going to be uh, dispersed throughout the skin and coat. The second area is digestion and energy level. Um, everything your dog needs are the sorry the other two are digestion um, and energy level. You know everything that your dog needs is going to be properly digested. He's not going to be having the um, fillers and the additives that are going to be maybe causing an upset stomach, um, some additional gas or bloating, anything like that. And then, of course, energy levels. Um, You're going to notice a difference in that because your dog is getting the energy that he needs. So he's not going to feel sluggish and tired. Um, It's just like you. You know, if you eat a diet that's full of processed foods and sugars, you're going to feel much more sluggish with a lack of energy. If you're eating fruits and vegetables and proteins and things that your body can use for good, healthy energy, you're going to be more active and you're going to feel a lot better. So the same goes for your dog. So if you know notice these things, sluggishness, lethargy, poor digestion, if you're noticing an upset stomach, if you're noticing gas, bloating, um, diarrhea, if you're noticing a healthy or an unhealthy, I should say, um, skin and coat, dry skin, itchy skin, a dull coat, um, these are all signs that your dog's not getting the nutrition that he needs. So those are the three areas to really focus on. Number one, skin and coat. Number two, digestion. And number three, um, his energy level. So when shopping for a commercial pet food, what should owners stay away from? Dr. Gerber says that you may prefer, say, for example, a vegetarian diet. 
but your pet is going to be um, best fed if he's an omnivore. So dogs tend to have a simple stomach and short intestines that are ideal for digesting animal protein and animal fat. So it's best to choose a food that includes an animal-based protein source like chicken, lamb, fish, or egg as the first ingredient. And you're not looking for chicken meal or beef meal. You're looking for that number one ingredient is fresh deboned chicken. It's fresh deboned beef, whatever the case may be, um, whatever that protein source is, that's the number one ingredient. And that is something that is so important. Yes, it's a higher quality uh, ingredient. So it's going to increase the price of that, which, um, you know, like we talked about, you know, price isn't the only thing that you should be thinking about. So it is going to be a little bit higher price, but it's going to offer your dog so much more nutrients um, in the long run. So price isn't always what you should be looking for. Um, And finally, you know, I spoke with Dr. Werber, or I should say, I emailed with Dr. Werber about some of the must-have things that pet owners should be looking for when shopping for a commercial diet for their dog or cat. And he says that when shopping the shelves, you want to look for products that have high-quality protein coming from animal sources like chicken, beef, eggs, um, versus products that use a lower-quality protein source like soy. So stay away from the soy products. Um, Like I said, look for that first ingredient as an animal based protein. Um, Healthy foods also include ingredients like vitamins and minerals to help maintain a soft and shiny coat and a mix of wholesome grains, natural prebiotics um, and antioxidants, things that are great. You know, prebiotics are great for digestion. Antioxidants are great for um, immunity. So you want to look for those additions as well. I really appreciated Dr. Werber sharing his uh, tips for us for looking for um, a great dog food and, you know, as well as talking to me about um, how seasons can affect your dog's appetite. And that's something, again, like I said, I never really took into consideration. Um, So I was excited to talk to him about that and share that information with you guys. If you all have any questions, please be sure to ask them. Don't be shy. Um, You can jump on our website, which is theoryofpets.com, and you can leave your questions there either. Either you can record them and I might use them on a future podcast or you can just um, send them via email and I will make sure to get those answered for you. If you have any other questions that you think that I or Dr. Werber could um, address for you, I would be happy to pass those questions on and get them answered if I can't myself. Um, and while you're on our website, theoryofpets.com, if you could just take a second to give me a quick review on iTunes, that would be really helpful. The more positive reviews that I have, um, if you enjoyed the podcast, just pass that along. It makes it a lot easier for me to reach out to experts like Dr. Werber, Dr. Adolph, um, the dog trainers and groomers that I talk to. If you guys are familiar with my podcast, you know that I quite frequently talk with experts and it makes it a lot easier to uh, get them to come on board and be part of the podcast when they see that people are listening and enjoying the show. So I would really appreciate that, guys. Uh, Thanks for watching, and I will see you back uh, next time with another great podcast episode. I will be uh, talking to a couple of other experts this week, uh, one about starting um, your own, launching your own pet product. So if that's something that you ever thought, oh my gosh, you know, if you've made something for your dog and created it, or uh, you have this great idea to market something, um, I am going to talk to an expert on that, um, as well as a grooming expert. And I also talked to um, a a doctor, um, actually a therapist who works with children about uh, the effects that, the positive effects that dogs can have on kids. So uh, that's something that I'm asked quite frequently by parents. Uh, It's something that, you know, we kind of are torn about should we raise dogs and kids um, at the same time when they're young together and um, first of all spoiler alert it is something that you should do it's actually a great benefit for both the dogs and the kids uh, but I will give you more information on that as well so uh, keep listening guys I really appreciate you tuning in and I will see you back next time